All right, hello folks. We're gonna do some midnight stamping here. Not quite midnight, but almost. We have some printable sticker vinyl paper right here. And I am going to try something on this paper that I've done before in terms of a composition, but utilizing this paper for some of the qualities that it seems to allow for in terms of media surface capabilities or uh, compatibilities, I guess we should say. In that, um, when I use certain types of media on it, it just seems to be able to take just about whatever I want to throw at it. So I love that. Um, there are certain limitations, you know, that I can't do. Um, but in terms of ink blending, but we can do just about everything else, it seems. All right, so what I have here is something that I've been putting off for quite some time. And that's just a brilliance re white reinker. I need a lot of white brilliance, I think, going into these pieces uh, for what I plan on doing on them going forward. They are just this vinyl is just too much fun to <laughs> to not use. So. Um, to use it in the way that I want to, I need a lot of this brilliance thing. So I don't know, I should really buy like many of these bottles of this because, uh, I don't know. It, when they get it in, they, they have it. And uh, I'm talking about Imagine Crafts. And uh, when they don't have it, I don't know, it just seems to take them forever because of the shipping issues, right? You know, the supply uh, line issues. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting some tree trunks down on this. I love this holographic look in the background with um, a bunch of tree trunks on here in the foreground. I just think it makes for a really great um, kind of framing device on here. But I've always done it just in black inks before. I've never used color down in the um, surface area and on the trees. So I want to try some of that. So um, let's see. I'll block off some areas on here. And the, the background is going to be a lot of clouds as well. So I haven't been doing um, enough of these cloud types of uh, formations uh, on this foil. So I thought that would be really be a perfect... Um, application for this ink on here. I need to be a little bit careful about how much ink I apply because I just re-inked my pad and now it's really super juicy and I don't want to get any blobs so I'm going to really try to spread this around um, very uh, gracefully I guess I should say but it doesn't have to be too gracefully okay. Um, I just don't want it, you know, to be a ton of blobs in the background. All right, but I don't know. That being said, though, you know, it's going to be covered up with a lot of media, so you don't have to be too careful about it. I just don't want, like, a big, huge, sopping wet blob, that's all. All right, okay, keep this a little bit uneven and uh, kind of irregular, varied, I should say, not really not careful all right and let's see how this goes here all right see what i'm doing here is i'm just kind of blocking this off like so and creating those um, little cloudy patterns in the background okay And this area down below is going to be a lot of the um, forest floor area. So I want to get that blocked off reasonably well. I'm noticing, noticing a, quite a difference in my um, white ink application. Apparently having a new re-inker uh, makes this easier. I've been using that same, you know, I'm, I was down to the last uh, few drops of my re-inker fluid and I th I'm convinced that that ink was thicker because this seems to be kind of spreading around a little bit easier for me this time. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm getting a better result than I have been on this paper. Either that or I'm just kind of getting used to working on this 
really fast drying um, surface, especially with the um, the Brilliance ink on here. Okay, so it's, it's kind of really building up like that. I'm getting a few little splotches like that. I don't know if it's my fingerprint or it's just on another part of this paper towel here, but again, that shouldn't really matter. Um, you know, we're going for this kind of cloudy, varied look in that sky area anyway, okay? Again, I'm just kind of trying to avoid like the, the worst of like, you know, some super thick blobs, okay? And if I get it here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of um, spreading it around a little bit. All right. So let's go down like this. It's hard to see what you're kind of doing sometimes. So I'm looking at this surface from different angles because I have so much light kind of reflecting off of it. It's, it's um, kind of difficult to see. It's also kind of what makes this surface so dynamic to work on. Um, you know, you get so much light reflecting off of the surface here. Um, this ink is going on and it's creating a, a translucent um, surface down here. So again, I want to get a lot of that uh, kind of blocked off. If I have some of it showing through, that's not a problem though. All right, so see that right there? So we're going to have these trees going off of the top of the paper too. I can't, well, I, I haven't really done this kind of blocking off with black yet. I guess we can do that, but um, uh, again, I can't really blend um, these inks very well because once this has been applied like that, it's really stuck down pretty firmly. So um, blending and all that type of thing, for me, at least in terms of all the media that I've tried on it, it's not something that... Um, that's going to come into play for me. In some ways, I don't know, it, it, it takes out one of the processes. It takes out a process that I really enjoy doing, but on the other hand, I don't have to do it and that's not a bad thing, you know, because we just compensate with other types of um, applications, you know, straight stamping, colored pencils, that type of thing. And there's something to be said for that, you know, it's. You know, there's less kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't consider blending tedium, but um, I don't know. It, it, it takes a little bit of a touch with certain types of uh, surface combinations. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so after you get that done like that, it creates a really uh, pretty firm line like that. So what we're going to do is to add a little bit more tone, kind of do it with a dry brush effect. Eh, there's a little bit of, eh, there's quite a bit of ink still in my cotton ball. I'm used to be, having being really, really dry, but that's okay. And I'm creating kind of this mistier type of look by going above and I guess below this um, overhead cloud here. I don't want, I, I'm not going for too much of this um, um, holographic paper showing in here. Uh, it is a very, very loud surface, okay? Now I've had more of it showing before, but um, on this one right here, I'm just, it's going to be more of like a peekaboo type of um, look kind of within this space going on in the background. You, as you can see, it's still very, very loud um, a surface, okay? So even if you have kind of a, a minimal application of it, it's going to be very, very visible. All right, let's see. Staying hydrated. It's super hot here. I'm, pr it's probably 85 in this room. and under these lights here. Um, okay, let's see. All right, let me get my bearings as far as um, 
where these trees are going to go. Okay, so let's go about right here. Over here. It goes something like this. All right. All right, let me just do this one at a time. Okay, so that tree is going to go roughly right here. Um, I can bypass this, but having that white in the background will allow me to give this tree trunk um, some color, and I'm thinking brown in this case. I mean, you can do whatever type of trees you want. Um, don't try to get it exactly right either. Um, not really the point here. Okay, so this is going to be over right here. And this one's, there's going to be three trees on this one. I'm just blocking out the whole um, width of it and length. Okay, height, I guess you can say. Kind of nice. Uh, in this piece, there's just, uh, there's so much color on the surface that um, I mean we can certainly add as much color as we want, but <laughs> with this type of surface, we really don't have to if we don't want to because the surface is already so dynamic. It's taken care of, uh, you know, a large portion of what will end up being the spirit of this card. In the end result as just being inherently in the surface so um, I don't know it takes a lot of the, uh, the work out for us okay all right uh, if anyone's watching hello to you uh, thanks for the thumbs up there appreciate that good evening to you as well <laughs> Glad to have you. I'm just, I don't know, I figured I'd press, I'd press uh, go live as opposed to just a recording here in case anyone was on, is in a different part of the world, or you're just up really late, um, or maybe even up super early, wherever you are. Okay, so here's the things now. Um, I can stamp on this with Brilliance Black, Dye Base Black, Versafine Claire Black, or a Stazon Black, all right? This Brilliance White on here is really quite dry and too much to touch, okay? It feels almost like I'm touching um, paper or something like that, okay? It rub and it's rubbing off a little bit on my finger, but for the most part, it's somewhat dry, okay? So this is what's, this is different than um, a holographic cardstock, okay, like um, a recollections foil, like this. Okay, this is cardstock, okay? But this is your sticker paper, all right? I thought these formulas would be, I, I didn't think they would be the same, but I thought this formula on here would be the same as just your white photographic paper that you would, you know, print out your photos on, glossy, you know, photos or anything like that, but it's it's just not. Um, and I know that because of how the stays on um, sticks to it and how it uh, accepts other types of inks or media that you apply on top of it. So like colored pencils really go on really nicely. It's unbelievable to me. Um, and, you know, I am just really excited about that um, ability. Okay, I'm just going to go on with a stays on here for this. Um, I find, I don't know, I'm really shocked about stays on too, and just in terms of uh, different um, surfaces. I'm surprised at how dark stays on black is. You know, the ideal black ink is one that's going to be as close to 100% black. Um, as possible, this really sticks on here. 
Um, and uh, I don't know, I've been pleasantly surprised. I, I just would have thought certain types of pigmentings. Uh, the Versifying Claire is right up there too, but um, like a Marvy black dye is really dark as well. But I, I don't know, I'm starting to believe that the Stazon might be even darker. Okay, Stazon, I have to remember to re, you know remove faster sometimes. I'm still stamping like I am on cardstock um, with dye based ink, and I hold this down a little bit longer. And to this type of paper, it really adheres, okay? But this is really flexible paper and sticker paper. So if you're if you end up peeling it off, like you're peeling off a sticker off of this, you know, when you're pulling the stamp off, uh, don't worry about it. It's kind of to be expected. But maybe just re-ink your stays on pad and lift a little bit faster. I don't know, I'm, I'm always kind of worried about that because I'm worried that I'm not transferring enough ink, but I don't know, so far so good. All right. Going to the tree trunk trio here, okay. I don't think I made this wide enough, but eh, so be it, it doesn't have to be. I'll go a little bit higher on this one. Okay. When I'm peeling this off, I almost feel like I'm going to peel off the surface of this holographic paper, but you know, or, or it's not going to stamp out fully and I'm going to pull off, um, peel off the, uh, the white pigment ink that's been applied, but it doesn't. It just goes, I don't know what I could, you know, what I would say, it's, it's going on beautifully. It's not me. It's the, you know, I'm talking about the surface here. So I'm not affiliated with this company at all. Um, just observation. Okay. So that is that. Um, we have these clouds in the background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a surface down here. Okay. And we're adding this down like so. This is the sedge filler stamp. Okay. And we're filling in. Okay, every time you do this, kind of overlap your previous impression uh, quite a bit. Don't, don't stack this. Uh, like you're stacking bricks or something like that. Really overlap your imagery, okay? All right. We have that now. So we have all of our foundation um, established here. Now what I'm going to do, I would normally do my toning in here with inks, okay? But we're just gonna do that with colored pencil this time. If I want these to have um, other hills up here, I can do that as well. Um, just by stamping this a little bit higher and it'll look like background rolling hills in the distance. I don't know, maybe we should do that, I'm not sure. Okay, so, but I, I think that's good enough for right now. Um, as far as our structuring goes. All right, now here's the thing that I'm kind of running into in terms of what I should do here. I'm always kind of curious if I should um, color this in first, or if I should stamp my foreground. Um, if I colored in with the colored pencils, I'm I'm still a little bit worried that I can't get a really great um, uh, impression over all that wax. But, you know, maybe the stays on is made for that. Like I said, I'm still not used to using that um, all the time. So, uh, I don't know, that's going through my mind. I should be getting used to it because I've been using it now for a couple months, but um, I don't know. I, I guess I, I don't know. I don't trust it or something like that still sometime. Even though it hasn't failed me yet, so I don't know. Okay, let me see here. I think I'm going to throw on a couple things uh, in the background though right now. Okay, this is just a solid tree. Now I'm wondering if I should stamp this one in 
green. I'm just no, I'm just gonna do it in black here. I'll go for kind of a lot of um, I'll go for quite a bit of contrast, I guess, uh, between some of the imagery and uh, that holographic paper. Oops. Just using certain portions of the uh, top of this pine tree for the amount that I want. It could be a smaller tree or it could be a hill in the distance kind of going behind that hill like that. All right. Now, let's see. A little bit too big. I'm trying to pick out a um, little subject matter here. Focal point. Let's go for my little deer silhouette. Okay, our foundation has really been established, but look at all this color in here too, okay? So we have quite a bit of color, roll, you know, working in here right now. All right, let's start coloring on here. All right, so um, I should just keep these greens out. Um, greens and browns, okay? And I'll pick out kind of a range of values of each tone, all right? It seems like I'm missing something here, but it's because I'm usually going for some colors in my sky, but I don't need to do that because those have already been established. So uh, let's see. So these are Priz uh, colors. <laughs> Hello, Jen. Um, a very late good evening to you. I'm right in the process of uh, filling some orders, and I'm going to be working really super late tonight any, again, but I really had to get um, some stamping in, so I thought I would just uh, try this um, piece out here. It's a, it's a composition that I've done a lot of times in different um, surfaces, but, and I've done it in the the holographic like this before, but it was a holographic cardstock, not the holographic vinyl. So this is the thing that um, I'm really enjoying um, doing on this vinyl. Okay, so I did that white out down here below. You can see some of that color showing through a little bit um, down in this forest floor area, like right here. And I think that looks pretty good, but, um, I don't know, I'm going to go over it with my tones like this, and then we'll create some sort of lights, lighting scheme in here, too. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put my lighting scheme, my light is going to be coming from, like, right here. Let's say I'll put it right in here, okay? So my shadows will come out this way, all right, like from here down, like this. And then when you get over here, if the lighting is coming from here, then your shadows at the base of the tree will roughly go like, you know, like that. Okay, a little bit more of an angle. Okay, but the trees, this side of the tree will be darker than this side. 
and the left sides of the left trees will be darker to reinforce that idea of this uh, sort of lighting coming from there. But I'm not going to leave the side, you know, the, the light sides, you know, white. I'll, you know, I'll just leave them lighter. Okay. So what, what timer are we on this right here? I mean, there's a 25 minutes in this scene right here. I mean, this isn't going to take very long at all. Um, I mean, most of it's just kind of already been established. So that, you know, I think that takes a little bit of time is just doing that white out process. So, you know, it, and it, we don't have to do it real carefully either. Um, you know, all, all that white is in between here, you know. I mean, so what, you know. Um, we don't need to get super... Um, tedious about the application of that type of thing. And I, I'm going to put a bunch of foreground in here anyway, so I don't. I just don't think that's going to matter. You know, if, if someone got your card um, using this uh, surface right here, um, having that white in between that tree there is not going to be something that anyone's kind of uh, noticing here. They're going to notice all that color on there coming, you know, all that light being reflected off of that surface like that. Anyways, and this is the uh, just this one value of brown here. I mean, I think I'm going to use about three different browns, but I mean, you know, if someone wanted to use one, I think you can get away with it and I can think it'd look just fine. Um, use, use, you know, use the one brown for a, you know, a few different values though. Um, you know, go a little bit thicker with your application and the darker side to make it a little bit darker, you know, and then utilize your pencils for lighting as well as the hue, but within each hue, you know, you can establish a lot of different values just by how much you apply of it. So you can get, really maximize all of your um, colors. This goes for inks as well, but just not in this case, because I don't know, I, I don't find ink blending on this type of surface to be easy to do, if it's even possible. It just dries so fast, you know, um, when applying it down. But look at that right there. I think that looks pretty cool as is. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use greens down in this area down here, but when I just do greens only, I find that um, it looks really kind of, uh, uh, I don't, it doesn't look natural to me. So I'm, I'm going to be applying some of this brown down here as well. I'm just doing it in a very light shade like this, okay? So it's just, I don't know, it's adding another layer of Oh, value and hue, uh, and it'll be one that'll be buried underneath a lot of other tones. All right, it's kind of a dirty application of that brown. See that some of that holographic kind of color showing through, it's always kind of interesting having some of that color kind of influencing what we end up seeing on there too. Okay, so that is that brown. Let's go to the next brown. Uh, know, this one looks like more of a, a little bit of a grayish brown. It's a darker one, so applying that from, eh, I don't know, from about right here over, okay. Uh, 
I like being able to go and do like some detailed coloring right off the bat using colored pencils. Usually I, I don't do any detailed coloring um, with hardly any media when I'm applying just dye-based inks, you know, because I'm usually applying it with some sort of sponging method, so it's not really conducive for details. All right, adding it down in the shadows again. Let's see. Okay, let me see. Let me get my bearings here a little bit. Okay, the angle is going to be coming roughly this way, like this. Lighting coming from here, so uh, my shadows here will be coming this way. Okay. Like that. Shadows like that. Okay. And the sh sunlight from here, so this is the angle for this shadow, kind of roughly. I'm not a rendering instructor, so <laughs> I'm not, you know, these aren't like entirely accurate in terms of a uh, lighting direction, you know. But uh, for our purposes, I think it's accurate enough. So see these um, shadows coming from that? So you just always aim uh, your shadow, let's see right here, and a little bit more of an angle. And so let me see, let me come over like this way. I mean, if you get it kind of close enough, you know, it'll read as uh, enough, you know, it'll read enough as you know that oh i forgot about the deer <laughs> so it's it's coming like this so a little bit of shadow and kind of dissipate it coming down this way a little bit like that like so so the lower um the light uh on there the kind of the longer the shadows will be you know kind of overhead um it's making a much shorter shadow so in this case a little bit of a more of an elongated shadow is a little bit more um, dramatic, probably. Okay, so here's the darkest of brown. So you see, I'm kind of adding this on the far side of the tree in relation to my light source. Okay. And the trees on the other side, the trunks on the other side, will have the opposite side shadow rendered okay and then we'll also use black on here all right but see what i mean about that uh white pigment ink it just seems to be taking the um the colored pencils remarkably well um considering that this is foil that we're applying these colored pencils to it's it's uh it's really amazing it's not it's not a textured paper or anything like that that's you know would be even better for colored pencils but you know it's not bad of a it's not too bad of a surface for um for applying on foil. Now we're not applying it on the foil, we're applying it onto the, um, the Brilliance White, of course, but, you know, it is foil that we're benefiting from in terms of the, uh, the holographic aspect of it, so it's pretty cool to be able to have those types of colors on that type of really super loud surface like that. So look at that. It's like, that's, that looks like a night to me. And here's like, I don't know, noon <laughs> or something like that, uh, you know. Um, I don't know, just, I don't know, you can get like a sunset look out of that too. Okay, so um, let's go with the greens down here in this meadow area. This is a little bit too yellow-ish of a green. I don't want that, but I do want it as kind of a base layer for the other darker greens to come.
this um, yellow will uh, yellow green will provide um, you know hopefully a nice kind of base layer warmth for the other darker kind of neutral greens. This is a very warm green. All right, that is that. I can't even tell which one's the next one, the next color in value here. We'll bring some of this green up into the trees as well. We have some of the browns going into the grass, but then we have some of the greens going up into the trees to give it a little bit more um, kind of color continuity and um, uh, continuity and harmony. It really makes those two areas really related, okay? All right, that is that. You just go to your next tone. Uh, let's see. It's kind of like a, this one's a, like a Christmas green or something like that. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit warmer than that. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's like a Christmas green. It just looks a little bit warmer because you can see that yellow um, green showing through. So when you get into your darker tones, just kind of concentrate them a little bit more on the shadow areas, I think. that I think that looks pretty dimensional there for that okay all right let's see let's did I already use this green right here let's see it's a little bit of a darker one I am getting some uh, wax buildup right now um, you know, just from using this uh, surface, it's kind of getting pretty saturated with that ink. So we won't be able to go too much more on here. But I do want to use um, black on here, so work through your range of tones and then get to black. So let's see. Black. Okay. And hopefully the black prisma will kind of really anchor our 
um, objects into the surface um, by creating um, a shadow in the similar in the same value as uh, the images were stamped out in. In this case, it was a uh, versifying black. So we're finishing up with the prisma black like this, and it's really kind of anchoring them down into that surface like that. But you know, it's not a super black. It's just using black for a gray um, ish tone like that. And then bring some of that black like this, go down into the grass and then bring it up into the, um, the tree trunks like that. And you can really create your shadows, um, or shaded side, I should say. Shadows and shaded side of the tree like that. So this, just kind of bring it in like this. using that black uh, colored pencil for my uh, for my objects Okay. Hello, Panic Coffee. <laughs> Good evening. All right. There we have that right there. Isn't that fun? I love that uh, holographic look with colored pencils. You know, it's always been with inks before, but, you know, I I'm a fan of colored pencils, but... Um, I haven't used them a lot in the past, but I really love it with these super loud papers like this because it's just, colored pencils are like one of the more mellow looking um, coloring methods out there. You know, there's, it, it's always, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's like really super vibrant ways you can use them, but they tend to be real mellow looking, you know? It, it just, you know, just in general, you know, they're, they're soft looking and just, I don't know, really mellow. I mean, that's the part that I like about them. Okay. But I really like that contrasting against, you know, super crazy loud sky like that. So, hello, Michelle. Good to see you. Gotta love the holographic there. Yeah, I agree. All right, so that is okay. So one of the things about I, I really built up. I, I don't know. There was there was eight um, layers of colored pencil down here. So it's a little bit blotchy, you know. If I you know zoom in, you know my areas down here. That's like like a real. Bl yeah, sorry, it's all out of focus there. That's a real. Oh, God, I, I I think I think it's the heat or something like this getting to my cameras or something like this. It is just not wanting to focus here. Hold on a second. Ever since it got really hot, um, things have been a little bit crazy here. Okay, but anyway, it's a little bit blotchy down here. It's it's an ugly 
kind of built a colored pencil look down there. Okay, but so I'm just going to go in with that um, and add in some crisper elements into it, and that's going to be the foreground, you know, top and bottom area on this. Okay, okay so I just think, I'm guessing that um, the versifying, I mean, that uh, stays on, not versifying, um, the stays on, I think that that this is the one ink that I think would do the job that I'm using it for right here, and that's to stamp on wax and to reasonably adhere to it, okay. Yeah, because Stason's supposed to work on everything. I don't know if it does, but I got to think that uh, like wax is going to be one of the more challenging um, surfaces for it. But if we have an ink that can do it, I would think it would be stays on. And then plus I can, after I stamp this out, I could spray seal it if I want to, uh, which maybe we'll have to do anyways. It We won't have to do it from, you know, in terms of like someone handling like, like that white pigment ink in there. It's just not, you know, it's not wiping off. It's really stuck there which was the thing that really initially shocked me. It still shocks me, I don't know. If I stop doing this, if I don't do anything on this holographic for a month and I go back to it and do something on it, it's, it's going to surprise me again because it, got, it, got, it goes against kind of um, just about everything that I know of surface, media combinations of anything else that I've used in the past. I mean, just stuff would not stick to, you know, foils like, like the Brilliant Sink. And then the Brilliant Sink is stuck, you know, it's, it's stuck, adhered there so well that um, we can do that colored pencil right over the top of it. 9 a.m. there, Panic Coffee. Awesome, awesome. Patty, can you remind me where you are again? Were you the one that was in South South Australia? Or was that there? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I think it stamps out um, just fine on the wax. The thing that I want is, is it adhered there where it's not going to like wipe off the wax. That, uh, that was the thing that, uh, that I wouldn't want. Look at it, see that right there? Look at that. That looks like, a, I don't know, looks look, like a morning or something like, you know. I love that you can get your different, um, <laughs> yeah, you got night and day all within that same kind of, uh, holographic cardstock depending on kind of what angle you use it at oh belgium okay got it i have a really bad memory everyone so apologize for that okay let's see um angered pegasus got it that's a cool name Well, thanks so much for joining in. Okay, so let's see here. All right, so we're going to do some foreground, overhead uh, foreground imagery on here. And again, we'll do it in the stays on. Now I could do this in multi-tones. I could do that. I could stamp it out in color and then in black as well. I think I'm just going to keep this one really simple and go for a, you know, a fairly strong silhouette up here. So I'm going to do a lot of um, kind of double stamping and kind of offset it a little bit just to make it a little bit more dense up top. Now this is where um, a lot of times I would bring in some additional tone um, around the uh, perimeter 
and make it darker kind of in a vignette uh, type of effect. But in this case, you know, we can't really blend on this paper because it's just, it'll dry too fast. So I'm trying to create a bit of a vignette with um, the density of stamped imagery in those areas, okay? In many ways, I mean, doing this like this, I mean, it just kind of makes it faster to do, you know, rather than bringing in all that additional tone. It's kind of nice to be able to do it with just imagery itself. Not that I can do it, you know, with imagery. I don't know, I just haven't really thought of doing it. So I'm kind of doing it out of necessity and I think it works pretty well. I'm always looking around for my reeds stamp. I usually keep that right on my desk here. Oh, let me use this one as well. I'm getting some really light impressions um, on some of these um, impressions and it again it, it is where it's going over the wax so I don't know it's almost like I find that if I hold it the stamp down for like I don't know it seems like even a half a second longer I'm getting a little bit of a darker impression um, than lifting it too fast so it looks a little bit darker than what it looks like here so I'm getting some glare, so you know it looks a little bit lighter in some areas with the light kind of shining on it. Okay, so let's see. There's that one, and then... Oh, here we go. It's right in front of me. Okay, so I'm layering reeds large here. Okay. Some extra grasses. And I'll go a little bit, you know, quite a bit denser on this corner too. So the four corners um, kind of are the areas that I really focus in quite a bit in terms of foreground imagery. But we'll do it all over the place. But will really give several impressions in the low, you know, upper and lower corners. And again, it's to uh, frame and, you know, create a, try to create a, a strong vignette and framing of the imagery or composition. All right, so that's the framing uh, of that. Uh, one of the things I, I mention a lot um, when I'm initially doing the, the white ink toning and then the stamping in here, you know, it's that, you know, by the time you add in all these other colors like the colored pencils and these types of foreground things, you know, every time you do something over something else, um, from a visual sense, um, you're pushing everything else in that's already down there, kind of in the distance. So even these rocks on top of the colored pencil will kind of um, eradicate some of the my weaker applications of the colored pencil. So in, in some of those areas, like I said, it gets blotchy. Okay, um, I get blotchy with the white, but the imagery over the top of the white eradicates that. Um, the colored pencil over the white areas like that, that's, you know, really irregularly applied, um, takes care of that. My colored pencil work, you know, I put these little images over the top of it, like those little pebbles, those little tiny rocks like that. And that kind of remedies that. And then, uh, you know, and then these things going over all that, that also kind of remedies that. So 
it's like everything kind of keeps getting pushed um, back into the distance from a visual standpoint. So um, uh, don't panic, you know, <laughs> if you're applying some of this stuff and it's just not going on um, in a really smooth or as smooth an application as you think you should be getting or you desire to be getting, okay? Um, because, you know, once you layer it, you know, if it's one of your base layers, or if even if it's one of the last layers you did, if you put something over the top of it, it's going to, it'll blend it into the background, uh, hopefully harmoniously and whatnot, unless you're one of those people that, you know, I've had people in my workshops, you know, call me, oh, hey, uh, can you come over here? And it's like, oh, how's it going? Oh, you know, it's uh, really horrific. And I say, well, what's the matter? Okay, I'm looking at their piece and it looks really beautiful. And they say, um, how do you, I got this little, you know, little dot right there, and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I would tell them to put some white pigment ink over the top of it or something like that. But, you know, that's someone that's, you know, sweating over like a, a half millimeter dot, okay? Okay, so anyway. Uh, okay, so I'm adding in... This is what I'm doing, what I call sandwiching right here. Hello, Donna. Um, I'm adding in some white pigment ink. Okay, so we started off with white pigment ink. We added all this stuff in here, and then you end up with white pigment ink. It's kind of going, you know, you're going in like a little circle. Um, and I really love that because it really envelops our objects in a certain... Uh, um, I don't know, substance or, uh, a certain medium, of course, but, um, uh, I'm talking about what it represents. It's, it's like light. Okay. It's like you're enveloping your objects in light and it's a visible light. So it's really kind of a, it's kind of kinesthetic looking, you know, it, it, kind of invites, doesn't it look like more like, you know, there's more, it's more atmospheric. So chances are all of you are very visual. You know, if you're watching this video and you're, you know, you're crafters and you make things, you know, you make visual creations, right? Um, but if you also like things like textures and things like that and touch, I think that adding in something like that, it introduces kind of a visual touch to it, um, kinesthetics. Uh, so it's like uh, representing um, another sense into uh, the scene. Sometimes you can look at some people's pieces and it's almost like you can hear the location that they've done. Um, the quietness or something like that a lot of times. So anytime you can kind of represent a little bit of a another sense in your pieces, you know, rather than just um, something visual, you know, which, you know, they all are, you know, we're not doing like music here, but um, anytime you can kind of tap into that other thing, I don't know, maybe some people can do, you know, it's a, maybe you can taste the salty air in an ocean scene or something like that with some sea mist, you know, or something of that sort. It's always kind of nice, you know. You can dip into, uh, you know, the viewer's uh, resources, you know, or references, I guess it would be. Okay, so this is the brilliance ink too. It's uh, it's going right over the top of the uh, uh, the wax just fine. All right, I do it like at the, right around the legs of this uh, deer here, something like that. And let's see, let's put some of this up in these leaves as well. You know, some of those leaves can be catching some of that lighting. Uh, a couple of the pine trees in the distance. 
not super far distance, but you know, the near distant area. About like that. All right. I think I like this piece. I think I like this piece better than the ones I've done. Um, just like on blue foil or something like that. I like those too. They're striking, but um, I don't know. It's just a little bit more um, going. It, this one's more, I don't know, varied, I guess. It, it has just, there's different personalities in this piece because of those colored pencils and shadows and everything like that down there. And it, this one, I don't know, this one didn't take longer to do or anything like that. So it's pretty fast, uh, pretty fast to do. Uh, what's refl- oh, sorry, Michelle. Uh, what's reflecting onto the hollow paper? I don't know. Uh, if it's like this, I am. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't see anything in there. Do you, it, I don't see my camera. This one's not real super mirrored. So even if I put my hand over the top of it, see, that's my reflection right there. It's, you know what I mean? It's really hard to see. But I have this all kind of blocked off too with the with the white pigment ink underneath it. So there's only a band of the hollow showing right through there because I have upper and lower cloud structure in here. I blocked a lot of it out just because of how busy that holographic paper um, tends to be. Trading cards back in the 90s when hollow cards... Oh! Yeah, those foil, specially ones, right? Yeah, you mean, yeah, I remember that with a lot of the sports cards and stuff. Like, yeah, that was all the rage, huh? Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the trading card thing. Were you into trading cards back then, Panic Coffee? There was... Um, I remember... All those cards, they still do that thing too, where there's uh, some signature cards in certain packs, and then there was also like jersey packs where they, they buy some like jersey, you know, uh, and they cut it up <laughs> into like one inch cubes and uh, put it on some of those cards or within, I don't know, within those little cards too. I always thought that was uh, really something. Okay, so adding in some little uh, uh, highlights with my white pen. This is where I really should be zoomed in a little bit here. Pokemon trading cards. <laughs> uh, one of the um, one of the uh, stamping businesses out there, um, Sunday International. I don't know if you know them or not, but um, they were someone that started off, I think, in the Pokemon trading card business, and then they went into um, rubber stamps and those types of supplies after that. I'm pretty sure that was the case with them. Okay. All right, so this is adding another kind of twinkly little texture down. So it's like the most for the foremost kind of visual um, area on here. Sorry, you can't really see it. If I if I zoom in, you're not going to be able to see it at all. But I don't know if you can see those down there like that. Uh, I don't I just don't think I, I don't need to do too much on this one. It's just like I usually use a lot of um, highlights on my cards, but I don't know with that colored pencil. I don't, you know. I don't feel like I need to, or, or maybe it's not even. I don't know. Maybe it's not even a. Oh. Called for maybe. I don't know. All right. So let's go like that. Let's bring in some color down there as well. Um, let's see. Not that one. Like some uh, lupin or something like that. That was a little bit too dark, isn't it? Maybe like this one. You could, we can bring some of that, you know, some of those colors up here. 
And let's see, see so there's a little bit purplish color like that. It, it's, a, it's an excuse to bring some of this color down in, down in that uh, grassy area. Let me see if I, I see a little bit of that color showing through right down here where I didn't apply the same amount of white in this. You see that little blue there or, okay, yeah, see this is right in here. There's a little bit of that color showing through. So you get a little bit of color showing through a little bit. Maybe what I need to do is I need to not block out so much of these areas so that, you know, we do get some of that um, color showing through a little bit more. Um, and, you know, we just take advantage of it strategically. Where I, I don't think you'd be able to see it too much, but then maybe if they hold it up, you know, and they get more of those colors showing through there. I don't know. It, it could be interesting to do that and not just kind of completely block it out. Okay, so here's some of these uh, purple little things. Lupin. You're not going to be able to see it too much. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a darker violet here. But I don't know. It's just an extra little tone down there. Maybe maybe I need to. Oh, let me see. Let me, let me go to. Uh, it's, uh, I'm being a little bit pickier here. I, you know, usually I didn't have so many colors. So it's like, OK, I'm going to just go with the pink. <laughs> you know, because I had five colors and one of them was pink. Now I'm kind of being picky because I have like four different values of pink in that uh, in this uh, artistro you know set here. Uh, let's see. Angered Pe oh angered Pegasus really isn't angry. It's a cool name though. <laughs> Collecting Marvel cards. Yeah, that's awesome. Still am into trading cards, Magic the Gathering, and they have even more crazier foils right now. I bet they do. Um, they, I don't know. I'm sure they're embossed as well and all that type of thing. Do you buy, do you ever buy um, like the whole box and leave it unopened so you have an unopened box of those types of things? I have some Star Wars cards from The Empire Strikes Back. Um, I was a little bit too young when Star Wars first came out, but Empire Strikes Back was when I was collecting comic books. And that whole trading card thing, you know, was a whole kind of part of that comic book era in collectibles. And um, I have a whole box of uh, The Empire Strikes Back cards, and one of them is completely unopened. So, um, hello, Paulette! Have a good night's sleep, sweet dreams, Paulette. Thanks for joining in. Uh, holographic, colorful, sweet dream. They say we dream in black and white, but maybe this time you'll dream of uh, of uh, these colors right here. <laughs> oh, you open everything, Panic Coffee. Yeah, I hear you. I do have some uh, Marvel cards that I uh, um, didn't. I, I opened, um, but on all my trading cards and uh, baseball cards and all that type of thing, I kept the wrappers um, for them. Even when I opened them. <laughs> all right, good night, Paulette. Okay, so here's some of this pink right here. Uh, this one shows up a little bit more. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. If I go in too much, it's all blurry here. But you can kind of see the colors if I show it right here. It's a little out of focus right there. But all right, let, let's do something right here. Let's let's go ahead and mount this up. These things look so much better when they're mounted. Uh, let me see this piece of paper right here is all, this is my piece of 11 by 17. It was all dented here in the corner. So I'm just going to use this one to mount this up. All right. So this is a holographic sticker paper. And um, if I'm mounting this on something that's already pre-cut, I, I think I'm using my, my glue, uh, tape runner on here instead because I can position it a little bit easier and exact, but 
on this one right here, the sticker, you know, it's like I'm not that accurate with it. So um, this one I will just do, I will mount and then cut afterwards. So we get this type of thing. This is really thin if you haven't used this um, vinyl before. So I am not going to be real careful about this because I'm going to cut off the um, sides of it anyways. So I don't know, it just surprises me how thin this is sometimes. But it has to be. I guess it, it shouldn't surprise me. But the way that it takes media, I guess, I guess maybe that's the part that surprises me. But it doesn't surprise me in that it's too thin because... I think I just screwed up here. <laughs> here, I need to work out this air bubble here. See, that's the thing about the sticker thing. It's just, uh... okay, no, okay, I didn't need to work it out. It's it's adhered there. Okay. Um, it surprises me in that it can take a relatively heavy amount of uh, media application to it, but I mean, it shouldn't surprise me that it it's thin because it's got to be able to run through all those rollers of a you know your home printer. So, uh, I don't know. It still surprises me though. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's make it a thin trim here. I'll go about, I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Let's do like a, I don't think that's an eighth of an inch. It's like a sixteenth of an inch. I'm gonna give it about a sixteenth of an inch border. I don't know what that is in millimeters. Maybe one and a half millimeter or something like that. And I'm just eyeballing it. Which means that, you know, it's probably crooked, but uh, it's uh, close enough here. Let's see. I, I Yeah, I keep the wrappers, uh, Panic Coffee. I was looking at uh, some online things and... Uh, the wrappers um, for some of those like Star Wars cards, you know, this is from 1977. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they're worth, but I saw what pe some people were selling them for. In some cases, I don't know, some of those wrappers seem to be as much as like a single card too. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Oh, you're, you're a collector, you know, uh, you should save everything. <laughs> All right, so there is the first little kind of border around there. See, even that white border even helps it, huh? Uh, a little bit at least. Okay. And let's go like this. This is just a piece of matte black, I think. I also have a real glossy one too. Uh, let's just keep it. Let's keep it simple and uh, just clean with the, the matte black, I think. Okay, we gotta go with the tape runner on this one. In the past, I was really lazy about... Um, I don't know if it's lazy, maybe it's lazy, I don't know. Usually I'm just kind of, after I do the uh, the card portion of it, you know, I'm just thinking, okay, I'm done. And I, you know what I mean? I'm already on kind of thinking about the next card that I'm doing. But these look a lot better kind of matted up and, you know, formatted up like this. So I probably should have been doing that all along.
All right, so that is that. I think we're done here. Uh, so Donnie, you have a uh, your uh, Pokemon card collector there. Was it that you know, that's what you were referring to? Oh, Lord of the Rings trading cards. I love Lord of the Rings. I, in fact, I was just talking about it to, tonight with my wife. Um, and we were talking about the latest. Uh, is it HBO or Netflix? Netflix, Netflix, I think. Um, but yeah, we were talking about Lord of the Rings, the movies. Okay, that is that. Let me show you what this guy, what this looks like here. Okay, so I need to take a look at it too. So I got all those colors kind of right in there. I like that yellow. Look at that, on that yellowish tone right there. It almost looks like a like an early morning or something like that. Now that looks like looks like a twilight there or something like that. I like this one right here. The yellows right here transitioning over into these darker tones like that. I think that looks really cool. Oh, there's that. There's the blue right there too. That I don't know. That looks like noon to me or something like that. Like that color almost. I mean, it's you know. I mean, people are doing this to it. I don't know. You can't really see, but um, I don't know. That's what that looks like. Yeah, about a sixteenth of an inch, Donna. Maybe a little bit wider than that. Panic coffee. Maybe Donna, too. Uh, you need to go to uh, Comic-Con in San Diego here. I used to go to Comic-Con. Um, not too frequently, but I've probably been to it maybe six or seven times uh, in my life. But that's before it became, like, impossible to go to. And it, you know, I don't know. You're practically on, like, on a lottery system to get. And I used to go when it, you can just walk up you know, decide like the night before, you know, driving down here and just park at the convention center and, you know, buy tickets at the door. Adhesive rollers. Yeah, I get you. Thanks, Karen. I'm glad you like it there. Yeah. So I don't know. This, you know, this is like plain black border like that. Um, I don't know. I, and it's, and it's also matte too. So I, I, I just did that because I think that this is already like a super loud um, component in this piece. So I'm just going really kind of muted all the way around. I mean, you could go louder too out here. You know, you can go, you know, with a, I don't know what color would be cool, like a blue foil or if you had like a dark green foil maybe or something like that. Or, you know, you can pull out some of these other colors in here. Um, I think that would look okay too. But for me, I don't know, just a real kind of boring, nothing kind of border around here just to frame off and accent what's going on in here. Plus this kind of matte um, black in here almost looks like the, you know, when I stamp on that stays on over the top of the uh, the white brilliance, it, it wasn't giving me a, a real kind of glossy looking um, black. It was more of a muted flat black on there. Although, I don't know, these ones up here do look pretty glossy, though. So, I don't know, it kind of replicates that, you know, what's going on there as well. So, yeah. Oh, you did, Donna. Where'd you go to? Well, you obviously went to some sort of a, like a convention or something like that, or did you... It sounds like you got those signed, though, so you met those actors or somewhere. Was it like a convention that you went to, Donna? You would frame that and put it on, huh? People ask me that, and I said, I've never framed any of my pieces. I, I've never even put any of my pieces up on the wall. I am going to sign this one, though. I think I'm going to start signing my pieces. Which I never used to do unless someone asked me, like, at a convention or something like that, but... Uh, I think I'm going to start doing that if it's like a big piece. 
you know, or a bigger piece. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do, you know, I'm not going to do sign like an ATC, I don't think. <laughs> an inchy. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll um, uh, put my uh, initials or something like that. But yeah, Big Bang Theory refresh. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. Glad you like it. It was fun. Okay, so a little recap on this one. I, one of the things I was talking about when I first started this one out I, is I've done this kind of composition before, like quite a few times, you know, the uh, the tree trunk and tree trunk trio in, you know, kind of a, a meadowy type of thing. I've done it on um, a glossy cardstock before, and I've done it on different foils, and I've done it on holographic foil card stocks before but i've not done it on this newly uh kind of explore you know in the process of exploring surface before where you can use the colored pencils down here so that for me is like a big big um plus with this um Surface, in addition to all of that different media sticking so well on the surface, um, just about anything that I've done on the surface that has been applied with the white brilliance ink, though, um, has taken it really well. So, um, I don't know. I really like that aspect of it. I like that you can use... Um, you know, the brilliant inks on there and they dry and set. I mean, this is all set on here. I'm not worried about any of it rubbing off. So I mean, you can spray seal it, but I don't think we really have to. And a lot of times what I do is I spray, spray seal my pieces to enhance the, um, the intensity and saturation of the colors. But I don't think that's going to enhance anything that's going down there. You know what I mean? You don't really have to enhance colored pencils, first of all, because they're not like a super saturated looking tone where they, you know, you apply them, they kind of fade out, you know what I mean? Something like that the next day, like dye-based inks can look like they do. So you spray seal the dye-based inks to, you know, either bring out or retain the vibrancy of a freshly applied ink. But on this one, you don't really have to, so. Um, so it's just nice that everything's affixed to this on here and like i said there was um six layers of colored pencil laid down in here three types of browns three types of greens some of the greens are up in the tree some of the browns of the tree are down in the grass black everywhere like that and then we again uh we stamped out the um the tiny rock small that little texture over the top of the wax and you know i don't know it's not something that uh not that one this one right here, this little textured stamp right here, these little pebbly things are applied on the top of all that thick wax, and it, I don't know, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to peel off of that. So, okay, so the stays on really stuck to the, uh, it's sticking to the uh, surface really nicely. Hello, Linda. Good to see you. So, I don't know. I keep saying this. I, I need to quit kind of like, being astounded by the uh, the compatibility of uh, the different media on here, but I don't know. It's just it's just really a pleasant surprise. Again, you kind of need the brilliant sync though. I wish um, we could substitute like a hero hues, but I tried it on there, and the hero hues, which is an oil based pigment ink, which is all the other types of pigment inks except for brilliance, as far as I know. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it'd be worth trying, though, if you have it. You know, try it on a little bit of, a, you know, the vinyl sticker paper if you have some. Hey, you can just try it in a little corner or something like that and uh, see if it rubs off or not. But I couldn't build this one up as well. And then it also kind of laid on the surface where if I ran my finger through it after it, you know, I gave it a chance to dry for a few hours, it still kind of came off on my finger like... It didn't come out like a powder, but it felt like more like a like a cake of a uh, like cold pack cream or something like that you know that's what it felt like to me so i just think you know 
I didn't even try, or did I? I can't remember if I tried stamping on top of it. Maybe I did. I don't even know if I have that. Yeah, I, I, just, I still have that piece right here. So this was the, uh, the Hero Arts one right here. Yeah, okay, see, that's wiping right off like that. That's why I just wiped it off my finger. And I did this one, like, days ago. So I don't know why... Th oh, maybe the Brilliant Sink is water-based. Um, maybe that's why. Because I think on those packs of... Uh, on the packs of this paper, I think it did say something like it's for dye-based inks or certain types of water-based inks or something like that. Maybe that's it. Um... But I don't know, you know, again, you know, but if you stamp something on it, like the um, the VersaFine Claire, that's an oil-based ink directly on top. This Claire is absolutely dry on here. You know, I, I would think the Claire isn't, I don't know, is there a white Claire out there too? I would think it's the same thing. So I don't know, I, I, mean, I don't know, I'm kind of getting confused now, now I'm thinking about it. Because what if we got a VersaFine Claire white? Would you would be able to stamp on it like that, you know, and have it stick? Whereas like the Hero Hughes one, I, I gotta think they're, you know, I gotta think this is an oil-based ink, and I know this one is. So, I, I don't know. Hey, you guys have a lot of that stuff, I don't. <laughs> Someone inform me, you just need to tell me that. You should so others cannot claim it as their own, you know. Kilroy was here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, Linda, it was just an impromptu thing. I got to get, well, I don't know if I'm going to get back to pulling some orders. I had this big order that came in um, for overseas that I need to get prepped. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's too hot here. Well, it's hotter underneath these rims right now, but yeah, this is really fantastic stuff. I love it. And I uh, here's the thing too. I'm not sure if all the different um, vinyl sticker papers are the same uh, in terms of the formula. I got to think a lot of them are, and I'm guessing, I don't know this at all, but I'm guessing a lot of them probably come out of the same um, factory. I say that about all of those different mediums out there, you know, like you know, paint pens and, you know, those cheaper alcohol pens and um, gel pens. They all kind of look the same to me in terms of the, the molds that you're coming out of. So I think there's one factory somewhere cranking out some of these different types of papers. You know, the paper, like doing that type of thing is a big operation. So they have to really cover a lot of the market share. So I think it's just a lot of different brands selling the same type of paper. I don't know that for sure, but that's what I'm guessing. So I'm guessing that they would all take the stuff somewhat similarly. Okay. I don't know that though, for sure. But um, I know that each brand of them, there's no way that each brand is churning out their own unique formula of these types of things. It would just be, it's just too, um, you know, um, intense of an operation to do stuff like that. Stuff like that in papers too. No craft company makes papers either. Just so you know, like card stocks and whatever, you know, it's, they're all repackaged, um, centralized brands of those types of things. So anyway, <laughs> what are we getting caught? You know, got that, uh, I don't know. When I start blabbing, I start talking about all the kinds of things like that. I don't know. These are the, the things the things that I kind of ponder about, though, one, every now and then, or a lot, maybe. So anyways, there's your, uh, there's your Twilight, uh, or whatever, Sunset, oh, I can't get, I don't know if one's nighttime, uh, mor morning, let's see, where was that morning look? Uh, where'd that yellow go? I can't get that yellow, and there's... That's kind of a cool color right there. Eh, I can't find the yellow one anymore. Oh, wait, there it flashed. Uh, see, that looks like, oh, look at that. It's a sunset. <laughs> see, it's, it's whatever time of day it is out for uh, all of you all over the world, you know, we can have it all in one card like that. And then you can put some stars up there too, if you want to, and you know, 
kind of angle it in a way where you can see like a kind of more of a nighttime type of scene or whatnot, or you turn off the lights, you know, and have some glow in the dark little things up here. The one thing I'd change, maybe I wouldn't have added in that uh, pigment ink all in the middle there so that you get more of that showing through. Or I, I can add in some additional clouds in here too if I wanted to. Like at this point in time, I can do another thing and put another layer of clouds like that in the background, you know, going through those things. But otherwise, I don't, you know, I don't know. This one achieved what it was going after, which is this kind of this area down below with all the different textures um, complementing that area up there. So it's it's kind of nice when you find um, a different type of surface and media combination where it's like, you know, oh my God, I need to try that with, and then you have all these previous compositional things that you've done in the past, but you want to see it of, you know, what it looked like in that, in this new, whatever your, you know, media that you've, uh, you know, you're exploring. So I think that's a really good thing there because, uh, I don't know, it just makes, makes you think about, you know, other things like, you know, if some musician got a new guitar or something like that, you know, he's not going to play like, you know, they might learn new songs on it and might kind of inspire them for it, but they're going to be playing their, you know, this, you know, their songs that they've, you know, always been playing, but they want to hear it in kind of in a new way. So I don't know, that's what this paper's doing for me. Um, yeah, and you can find it anywhere too, so, uh, which is a good thing, right? You know, as far as I know, people in, you know, Belgium, can you, I don't know, can you get this in Belgium, Panic Coffee? You can probably get it out there, right? Holographic vinyl somewhere. Um, I don't know, Linda, Linda, you got yours, right? Some, you got, uh, but you, did you get a, I forget what you, what you said, um, about that. I thought you, you got some though, right? So far, no white versifying clay. Oh, no versifying clay. Now, why doesn't versifying clay have a white? Huh? If it's water-based. Oh, yeah. Well, the brilliance is definitely water-based. Um, it says on their, um, it says on their website, uh, it will adhere to most porous surfaces. Uh, yeah, it will adhere to most porous surfaces. What they had in mind when they created that label was um, glossy cardstock. But the nice thing about the Brilliance, though, it will dry on the non-porous surface like a foil, but then you just spray seal it on that one. But on this one right here, it almost looks like a foil. This is what I like about this one. These almost look like foils. And you get the benefit of that, you know, metallic look, but you don't have to spray seal it. And then everything else will stick to it as well. Um, before I, 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 you know, I was, be, you know, when I apply these types of white pigment inks on my foils, you know, all these types of things like this, um, I'm really careful not to touch it too much because if I just touch it, you know, my finger, you know, it'll remove you know, the ink, just like it did right here, you know, it'll, you know, come right off like that on foil. Okay. But, uh, on this, we don't have to worry about it. In fact, it, it's adhered and it's dried like within, I don't know. I, I think it dries like within a minute. So it's really amazing. They will stick on cling foam after heat setting. Okay. Careful not to heat too fast. Ah, yeah. Be careful on the, uh, you know, when heat setting on certain types of surfaces. Uh, someone asked me about, did I heat set on the, on the sticker, um, holographic stickers? Because that's how they thought all this different type of media was, um, sticking to it. But I'm not sure if I can add any type of heat to this vinyl sticker paper at all, first of all, because it's so thin and, uh, oh, they thought I embossed on it. I don't think I can, I don't think you can emboss on this, uh, sticker paper. I mean, it's going through a hot, uh, I don't know. I'm just guessing, but then again, I don't know. It's going through a hot, um, printer roller, you know, it uses heat. So I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it would take the heat. I guess it's meant to take heat. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm just assuming because I'm based on my experience with the foils though. Um, yeah. Starry, okay. Linda got her starry stuff in. Subtle, but I think it'll work. Pulled it off. 
Stuck it on a dark piece of cardstock. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, let us know how that works out, Linda. Well, I'm sure we're going to see it on the Facebook there, so... Yeah. Some yes, but usually buy from the Netherlands. Oh, yep, yeah, De Stempelwinkel. De Stempelwinkel is going to be in uh, uh, Stempel Mecca this uh, weekend for the German uh, rubber stamp convention. Sticker paper, but not the holographic. Okay, I had lots of other holographics, so I didn't order any. Got it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the, uh, like, the foil, right, Linda? Yeah, I gotta think that it would curl. Maybe if we mount it or something like that with some, like, painter's tape or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, you, we, you know, tape off, like, a watercolor paper or something like that before we paint on it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we gotta do something, like, special types of uh, treatments to, um... Uh, certain types of papers that we might be applying, um, certain types of methodology with it that could potentially, um, I don't know, kind of influence it or whatever, or I don't know, melt it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like um, like film or something like that where it's going to go up in flames, though, you know, with that uh, emulsion, you know, coating on there, you know. I don't know, I'm kind of joking around, but, you know, who knows with this uh, paper. I'm sure it's not flammable, you know. They're not going to make some kind of paper that's going to be going through, like, some hot heat rollers or something like that that's prone to, uh, you know, going up in flames or something like that. So, I don't know. But that being said, I don't know. Look in the, pa you know, thing. Uh, if it says something like, keep away from flame, then maybe, you know, maybe we ought to think twice about, you know, applying some uh, heat to it. Yeah. Let's see here. Anyway. Uh, okay, folks. It is one twenty one AM here for uh, both Linda and I. <laughs> Linda lives thousands of miles away, but she's still in the Pacific time zone. But anyways, thanks so much again for joining me in these, uh, for us, late hours here. But not out of the ordinary at all. This is still fairly early for me. I'm, I'm, I'm probably up for another hour and a half at least or something like that. Um, but fun stuff here. I don't know. Ugh, I, I'd say that I got to play around with that pearl. Was the pearl a sticker paper or was the pearl just a... I, I, the pearl was just a printer paper. I got to play around with that pearl paper a little bit more, photo paper, um, because that was a pretty cool surface to work on as well. It was almost like, I think it, it was almost like working on just some cardstock in some ways, somewhere in between like some cardstock and Star Dream. But I think it was a little bit more accepting of media than Star Dream. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, like I said, it must be the something to that uh, coating on the top of these papers. I never would have played around with these things either, so I'm so glad that, uh, I don't know, I am now, because I just wouldn't have thought it would work that well. I th I, fi I figured photo papers, fo photo printing papers, were kind of more of a specialty thing. I was always using them with um, just the white photo papers, you know, like glossy photo paper with um, alcohol inks, and I like that look. But it just, I don't know. Maybe they are visible, you know. Uh, uh, maybe you can play around with them, but I just didn't think to apply white brilliance ink on a white, you know, photo paper or something like that. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe it would work pretty good. 321 there, Karen. You are a late uh, sleeper or early super ultra early riser there yeah okay so folks thanks again for joining in it was great to have a chat with you all 
for joining in. Oh, anyone have a good name for this piece here? I haven't done that for a while. Name this card so you guys can come up with the title for it. Huh. Let me see. Does this uh, kind of inspire anything here? The colors, the mood, the atmosphere. Oh, that's kind of an interesting. That, even that looks pretty interesting right there, huh? It's like all washed out like that with that lighting on there. And then here it's like night or something like that. Or almost like a northern lights type of thing. It's kind of fun having those all those colors and just so many different personalities. I mean, I, I say that every time I do this thing, but I'm always kind of, I don't know, that always comes to mind when I... I don't know, when I roll this like that, you know, it's always kind of fun to see those colors coming out in there and different person, like that blue over there, you know, in conjunction, with and you can put your, I don't know, there's different looks if you put your, like that, you know, it's like all in the shade there like that, so. I'm with you, Karen, that's, for me, um, I don't know, I stamp and create all whatever time of day it is these days, but usually I felt my best work always came out at nighttime. I don't know. It's like a different, utilizing a different hemisphere of the brain or something like that. Or, you know, after my second wind or something like that. Uh, yeah. All right, so it looks like I'm naming this piece. <laughs> it's going to be, um, what about the, what about trunks and deer? <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure out something. Holographic. Uh, holographic. Uh, I, don't know. I, I don't know. Something like that. Multiple seasons. Oh, I don't know. I actually come up with these things pretty fast, but I can't think of anything right now. Tranquil Grove Forest. Uh, forest of Tranquility. Hmm. The Tranquil Grove. I like that one. All right, Panic Coffee, you got it. Do I hear any objections? No. Then Panic Coffee got it. Okay, so the Tranquil. So I said I have a bad memory. I'm going to write this down right now so I don't forget it. I often used to hunt in a place that looks like this. By hunting, I mean sleeping under a tree. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Nothing like that, going out and spending that time out there, walking around and going after, going after you, whatever you're going after out there. Rainbow Forest, that sounds good too. The Tranquil Rainbow Grove. Hmm. Tranquil. Uh, that rainbow in there doesn't sound too bad either. Rain, tranquil. In those uh, in those titles when I'm doing my videos, it doesn't have like too much room for uh, super long uh, titles. But uh, uh, yeah, we're going to go to Tranquil Grove. Nice and short and. Uh, Simple, but that rainbow forest sounds awesome too. That rainbow forest—that's going to be your the name of your piece. That you just got the uh, you just got the stuff in uh, uh, today. So, uh, Nate, do a piece in the spirit of that name there, Linda. You looked uh, maybe you looked ahead and uh, you foresaw Misty Meadows sounded cool too, Karen. Uh, we're going with Panic though. Keep that one in mind, though. That's that's a great future one. I, I, we should do one that's, like, super misty, you know, sometime. I've been wanting to do one that's, um, like, a really, really foggy um, area where it's, like, almost like the entire um, forest floor is, like, covered with mist, you know? Like, hovering, like, I don't know, one and a half or two feet from the surface or something like that one. So that would be a good one. Yeah. Maybe I ought to do that sometime. Misty Meadow. Yeah. 
Yeah, that rainbow forest, that does sound like, uh, it sounds like the paper that's going on there. I don't know, it could be like a, like a, a tranquil, the tranquil, uh, or whatever. I mean, we can always come up with another one. <laughs> we could always do rainbow forest here or something like that, you know? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I still like Tran Tranquil Grove too. Anyway, okay, folks, have a good rest of uh, the day, evening, uh, nighttime for all of you that haven't gone to sleep yet, like uh, like me here. Uh, oops, have a great... All right, folks, have a great rest of uh, your day, night, whatever it is there for you. And thanks again so much for joining in. I had so much fun with this piece here and chatting with you. I never know who's going to be on like in these like odd hours, odd hours for us, you know, not uh, not for a lot of the rest of the world, but who knows, you know? Yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. And uh, we'll see you. Hopefully we'll see you on the next uh, live stream sometime.